Alright, so now we're going to get to the logic aspect of it, the Python part, and I'm going to go to logic view as you can see here, the game logic setup, and I'm going to set it to perspective view, and add a plane, scale it up, drag it down a bit so it's not colliding with our cube. <coughs> And now what I'll do is I'll add a script from the template, game logic uh, simple. Delete these unnecessary sensors and whatever, the if statements. Own, oh, we're going to set this to cont cube. Cont cube. And I'm going to call this player controls.py. And we're going to add the logic. Now the logic is going to be on the cont cube object. You can see I selected cont cube. And I'm going to go and add an always sensor and a Python. We're going to set it to our script. Now be careful with this button. You should only press it when it comes to uh, objects that you want to check for every as basically get as accurate of a of a you know. Uh, check as possible. So for example, if you're checking collision for something, for a player, for example, or movement for the, for, for the player, uh, you want it to know when he pressed exactly so he starts moving and when he stops exactly, especially in a platformer. You don't want him slipping because the controls are clunky and, you know, he blames the game for losing. But you don't want it to be used on every object because it's, uh, it get, it, it's going to become hefty on the processor. It's going to cause a bit of lag. So we have our script here connected and now we can add some logic to it so we're gonna add the keyboard variable which you should be familiar with if you followed my uh, basic movement tutorials on Python uh, BGE logic keyboard and then we're gonna add the keyboard input so W key I'm gonna use WASD for the movement you can use arrow keys uh, if you want whatever you like but the W key which is moving forward is gonna be uh, uh, we're going to do the code for it now, BGE, logic, KX, input, active, because this is for movement, W key, let's say active, <coughs> or screw active, uh, we're just going to set W key, go with that, and BGE, logic, KX, input, active. Now, you should know this in the API reference, you might want to have it open if you're not familiar with code yet, and under game logic, you go down, and you can find... I think I've gone too far down. Game actuators, dynamic actuators. I'm just finding the input here. I think here it's sensors, so that's not down far enough. Shaders, blender materials. Let's work our way up. Okay, there it is. Input status. You can see KX input none, KX input just activated, which is just by tapping it. KX input active which is while you're holding the button KX input just released which is uh, when you just released the button so when you're holding it when you tap it it doesn't matter you releasing it is what matters so we're gonna go with a, uh, with active because that's what you use for constant movement and then equals equals which means check for BGE uh, or keyboard sorry keyboard events and then square brackets BGE events uh, w key and BGE events an event is basically input or whatever you can look that up in the API reference basically any form of input is a BGE event so if I go here BGE events search that up it's searching and we're gonna get results soon so you can see here D key uh, delete key comma key C key so I'm gonna go with W key and I'll duplicate this four times because I'm going to be using WASD four buttons and this is going to be S key, D key, A key and here with capitals it's going to be S you want to be careful with capitals by the way Python is case sensitive and now we have our basic keys mapped out so I'm going to go ahead and save and now we want to make the player move at a certain speed which we're going to call move Whoa. You want to have your mouse over Python when you're typing, because otherwise it's going to count the hotkeys on the Blender uh, 3D view. So mouse over Python and move speed. And I'm going to set this to 0 0.5. 0 
that's what I'm going to go for. Uh, you can set it to whatever speed you want. You can call this variable whatever you want. It's basically the variable, the variable that's going to represent the movement speed in our script. And we want to move the control cube, of course. So let's say uh, uh, we're going to set it to move, of course, when you press the WASD. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, W key. Sorry, not W key, if. It's going to be if statement. So if W uh, key, I don't have the K as a capital. You want to be careful to have it exactly the same way colon and then what we're going to do is we're going to use apply movement and this basically applies the movement to whatever object you specify in this case we'll, we want it to apply movement to the control cube cont cube dot apply movement m with capital and then the main brackets double brackets and we're going to set it to false because we want it to move on the axis and if basically the cube isn't going to rotate. We're not going to make it rotate in any way. Uh, but just to be secure, because we only want it to move on the axes, the global axes, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to set this to false, and inside is going to be the actual movement vector. So on the x-axis, we don't want it to move, because this is the W key, it should move them on the y-axis positively. On the y-axis, we're going to set it to move speed and on the Z axis zero. Now the advantage of course is once I have a bunch of buttons here using move, the move speed variable if I decide to change it to make it faster or slower or even if you have a feature for example uh, this, a sprint feature uh, you can easily change this variable uh, and it's gonna work fine you don't have to change it every line. Now we're gonna duplicate this except this time it's gonna be an elif to give it a lower to give the S key a lower priority than the W key which is going to be back of course and we're going to set this to negative for reverse. I'm going to save and I'm going to run it and it's a little bit too fast so I'm going to set this to 0, 0 0.05 and now you can see that my cube moves just fine. Alright so next up what I will do is I'll duplicate these for directional movement. Uh, because we want the X and Y movement to be independent of forward and back so that you can do them together at the same time. So we're going to set this to D. We're going to set this to A. D for right for me and A is for left. And I'm just going to delete the zero there and then add a zero so that move speed becomes on the X and Y is zero Z is zero and I'm gonna do the same here just add a zero and a comma and then it's the move speed is now on the X variable so now when I move you notice that I can move uh, perfectly if I combine say W key with D it's gonna move on an angle now our character is still not pointing and we'll do that soon uh, but this is going to be the basic, the very basic scheme. You can see now movement is already in. We can already move. And if we go to our camera, just so we can see how the camera looks. Uh, you can see it's a bit skewed up because of uh, the how the slow parent works. It's not a big concern. If I hit P, it's going to be reset. And now we can see that it follows smoothly. Alright. Uh, so next up, we're going to, in the next part, we're going to put the rotation in.